Tip number 275 from the book 501 Contractor Tips. This starts the new chapter on construction contracts. And the tip is making your payment methods crystal clear. Just a quick story. Um, one time I had in my contract that I was supposed to get paid after the drywall was hung. It clearly stated after the drywall was hung. The homeowner interpreted it after the drywall was finished. And um, this, uh, so you're going to run into these things every once in a while. And uh, you're going to run into it more often with people who are going to um, do it on purpose. They're purposely going to uh, incorrectly interpret your um, payment or parts of the contract that um, will benefit them just the way it is. I've worked for people before that, uh, you know, you have something in your contract and then um, they say, no, that's not what I, under what I understood. Well, this is how it is and it's clearly written. If I take it in front of a judge or a mediator, uh, I'm going to win. You're going to lose uh, more than likely. You're in the clear. Don't let them bully you into um, something that... Uh, uh, something that's going to benefit them and hurt you. So back to the story about the drywall. Um, the lady, we got in an argument and uh, I was, when I was a contractor 20 years ago, I had a tough time. I had a temper. I had a tough time keeping my cool. And it kind of, you know, made everybody, you felt tense, you know, you went over to work on the house, you had to finish the job, you had a contract. And, um, and I would often, if things got a little out of hand, I would ask the people, hey, if you want, you can pay me for what I've done and uh, I'll leave, you know, get somebody else to finish it. I never had anybody take that, you know, offer. I would just stay and finish the job and be civil and uh, get the job done. I mean, one time I worked on a job, I think, for six months. And um, I want to say within the first week, I got into an argument with the, with, with the lady, the wife, and it was miserable the rest of the time. And again, this is something that led me to my previous um, tip. I believe that was tip number 274. Uh, yeah, and, um, you know, kind of like don't work with people that are going to be a nightmare and if you can avoid it. And, of course, these people I'm talking about, I read them wrong. I really did. They were just charming and sweet to me and uh, worked with me. And the minute that contract was signed and I started working for them, it was a totally different story. So um, uh, it didn't work out. And that's, again... Without my experience, I wouldn't be able to share my knowledge with you. I'm, I'm hoping that you won't have to deal with this. You know, there are going to be things that happen I cannot prepare you for. There are going to be things that I'm going to prepare you for that you are not going to remember. And, of course, there are going to be some things that uh, you are going to be prepared for through either me or someone else or an event in your life. And you are going to be prepared for it. And I say Good luck. You'll be great on that one. So um, if you kind of got off track there, um, okay, you're pay making, your, making your payments um, methods crystal clear. If you do not do this um, or you make your payment methods crystal clear in your own mind, but it's not crystal clear to the people you're working for. Expect to have some problems. A lot of times when I did a room addition, I did a lot of room additions, and my payments would be, um, so to give you an idea, maybe it was 10% down, and or in, in the state of California, a maximum of $1,000. So if I had a job for uh, $40,000, 10% of that would have been $4,000. All I could have got was 1000 so let's just say that I got 10%. It's a job that's uh, it's a $10,000 job. I get I get ten a thousand dollars, and then I would get 20% after the foundation was poured, 20% after the building was framed, 
20% after the building was lathed with the, the windows were set and the lath or the siding was installed and then another 20% after the drywall was hung and then a final 10% when the job was finished and rarely did I ever run into a problem with that. Um, somebody, you know, there might have been uh, a few people who didn't, but most of the time um, explaining that to them and only having, that would be, I believe, six payments. This isn't difficult. If you're building a brand new home and you have subcontractors and you have, uh, um, um, you know, a schedule you're trying to keep, um, this is a totally different ball of wax. You know, if you're installing a, a toilet and then you're done, but you know, this is different. But uh, if you don't, um, on smaller jobs, hey, when I'm done, pay me. And of course, you're not going to get paid all the time. We all know that. Yeah, I'll pay you when you're done. And then all of a sudden, the homeowner disappears. Uh, been there. What a nightmare. Um, and uh, but on bigger jobs, it is. It's going to be. You're going to have to work out uh, maybe a detailed payment schedule, um, and and you might need to get a, a payment schedule from another contractor who's doing the same stuff if you can. Um, and and as as contractors, we actually do. Um, you know, you learn your trade most of the time from another contractor. And if this is the case, you're going to have information from them so that you can start your own business and make things a little easier. So um, I think I only had two problems during my career, honestly, because I spent a lot of time making this crystal clear to my customers. So if you are having problems with um, your payments and, and your customers aren't interpreting your words correctly, um, then you might need to change the way you deliver this uh, statement to them. And of course, if you're a contractor who's uh, deliberately deceiving your, your uh, clients, um, watching these videos are probably a waste of your time anyway. Um, you know, what are you going to try and learn how to manipulate uh, uh, somebody or be a little more deceptive and trust me I have to be careful with the information I share with other contractors because it can be um, twisted and turned around to for them to take more to take advantage of the situation and trust me there are plenty of tips in here that can do that because the goal of my book uh, the goal of these videos is to produce a better life for contractors you know, if you're a contractor who cannot afford health insurance for your family, you can barely pay your rent, you can't, you can't buy a house, um, you're just struggling all the time, this book's probably going to provide you with a little more insight than someone who's, um, you know, living in a multi-million dollar home and going on vacations uh, three times a month. You know, totally different um, scenario there. So, uh, anyway, that's my goal. And don't forget to watch the other videos and get the book. Use the book as a companion guide with the video. So off to the next video.